In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a complete third-person combat system in Unity, all with a single click. I built a custom package called the Hero Combat Controller, and it automatically wires up your player and enemy NPCs with everything you need. Smooth movement and jumping, click to attack combat, AI behavior with aggro and leashing, health bars, and floating damage numbers. All you need is Unity 6.2 or newer, and a 3D humanoid character model. I'll link a separate video on how to create and rig one, using 3D AI Studio and Mixamo. You can install this package directly from GitHub using a Unity package URL, drop in your models and have a working combat system in just a few minutes. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is set up our Unity scene here. So I've created a new empty URP project in Unity 6.2 and uh, now I'm adding a terrain object so we have a place for our characters to actually stand on. And then the next thing I'm going to do is pull in some of these uh, FBX models. Now I created these in some other videos, um, which I'll add a link to, so I won't go through the full process. Uh, but basically I used 3D AI Studio to generate these for me. And um, what I'm doing now is I'm pulling the material out and assigning that texture to the base map. It's just a little uh, extra step I've uh, had to do when uh, downloading and installing these uh, models into my project. So I'm just setting up the material here so she has the uh, right uh, texture applied to the model. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do here is go to the Rig tab. And this is very important. You need to set the animation type to Humanoid so it matches the animation types that we have in the package that we're going to install. Next thing I'm going to do is grab this uh, Goblin um, FBX file. And I'm going to pull in the GLB as well because that actually contains the texture in this case. Now you'll see that Goblin FBX is uh, like a document type of icon that means I haven't installed the GLT fast package yet. So I'm going to go into my package manager here real quick and install com.unity.cloud.glt fast. This just tells Unity um, how to actually import GLB files. And so you'll see there I've got the Goblin GLB now properly imported. So all I'm going to do is actually hit Control D and duplicate out the uh, texture. That's just a, um, an image file there. And then I can just Go ahead and delete the GLB out of the scene. And then like I did last time, duplicate the material out, set that base map uh, to the PNG file that we just pulled in, and then uh, set the uh, uh, material on the Goblin uh, model here. So I'm going to click Apply. And then just like I did with the uh, Hero model, I'm going to click on the Goblin and go to the Rig tab again and choose Humanoid for the animation type and click Apply. This will create an avatar for your character, which gets auto assigned when you drag it into the scene. And um, like I said, it's required to get the animations for this package to actually work properly. We don't want the generic, we want the humanoid rigging. So next I'm gonna pull our hero character into the scene. Um, she's gonna go in the corner here and um, you can see uh, the armature here. Uh, I used AccuRig to rig up um, this uh, Gwen character, our hero. And um, I used Mixamo to rig up our uh, goblin. So kind of showing that uh, multiple rig types work with this project. So I'm going to pull our goblin guy in now, make him off in the distance a little bit so he doesn't aggro right away. And uh, we'll set his scale up a little bit to about 1.3 just to make him a little larger. Now we're going to go back into the package manager and we're going to install these uh, free um, animation kits uh, from Kevin Iglesias. So these are um, kind of required to get this package to work right. If you don't install these, the animator controller that comes with the Hero Combat controller um, will have empty animations. So you want to make sure to install those. So now I'm going over to uh, the Hero Combat controller and this is on my Git uh, page. So I'll add a link in the description and basically I just want to put that URL in with the .git on the end and hit install there. And this will install the Hero Combat Controller package that I created. Uh, you can ignore those errors that was from a previous session. And so now we've got the Hero Combat Controller um, installed. You can see up in the menu there, there's actually a Hero Character menu. But the first thing I kind of want to show you is if you expand out the packages installed here and uh, go into Runtime Animation, Here's that animator controller I was talking about. So what I'm going to do is actually copy this into um, the assets folder so I have a local copy of it. You don't necessarily have to do this. 
but um, I'm, I like to kind of make a copy of it just so I can tweak it a little bit if I need to. So you can see the motions are set for each of these states. So in the top right, it's hue and mail, run forward, uh, jump, land, things like that. Um, that's the death state that I forgot to name. Uh, but you could obviously customize this and make these whatever you want to. And what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of testing to make sure I have my model set up properly. So if you click on one of the transitions here and drag your uh, character into the bottom right there, you can preview what the animations actually look like. So this is a nice way just to make sure you have everything rigged up right. If this isn't working, you did something wrong with the uh, rigging, the animation type, um, something along those lines. So um, now same thing for the goblin here, we want to assign the hero combat controller uh, or hero combat animator controller to the uh, controller there as well. And uh, just to test that the goblin is wired up right, we're going to do the same thing. So drag this down into the bottom right and make sure that he's animating properly with the animations that we have in the controller. So we're going to name, keep these names simple, hero and enemy in our hierarchy here. And uh, yeah, just to kind of show you the, um, the setup here, uh, we've got our hero over in the corner. And now we're gonna go and use the tool. So this is in the menu here. Um, so what you need to do is go to hero character and click on the, on the window. Oops, I forgot to add the controller there for our hero. So I'm just gonna do that real quick. So what this tool does is it's gonna wire up everything for you automatically. So it's gonna wire up the movement control, the combat control, um, it has a lot of options. You don't really need to mess with these unless you really want to, but it'll automatically find a melee weapon. So it'll by default look for like, uh, you know, a right hand type of object in the hierarchy. Um, you can set up your sprint speed, your walk speed, your camera settings, all that kind of stuff. Um, your health, your attack damage, your attack cooldown, um, your, the block multiplier isn't implemented yet. Maybe I'll do that in another uh, you know, version of this. And then the damage variance is just a uh, random, you know, amount of damage. There's also the floating damaged text that comes out of the character's head that you can set up. You can set the color. And then finally, the weapon radius and things like that. And then um, the animator parameter mapping. So these are those parameters inside the animator controller that we were just looking at. So if I go to parameters, you can see the velocity, um, the idle, idle bool, um, sprint bool, all those sorts of things. That's why I included that uh, animator controller as part of the um, distribution so it's easy to set up. Again, you could do this all yourself if you really wanted to. Um, but yeah, uh, the attack state layer is actually layer one. And the reason for this is that our attack animation is actually in a separate layer. If you look at the animator controller, we have a top layer here. And the reason I did this is because I wanted a mask that would only play the animation on the upper body. So if the NPC or the player is running around, um, only the top plays. And then you can see it's basically using that attack animation to determine when the hit occurs. So roughly um, about a third of the way through the um, attack animation there. So again, uh, I clicked OK and you just get a little output saying everything's wired up, all of the um, functionality that it did and that's all you need to do for the hero now for the enemy uh, very similarly you want to choose your NPC and you can actually drag your hero into here as well this will tell the enemy who to target um, it'll work by default if you don't add it in there but it doesn't hurt to override it just to be safe uh, and then you'll notice a lot of these other uh, parameters are the same sort of thing that you get with the hero controller so I'm just going to leave all of these default. Um, I made the floating text color for the damage that he does to, or he takes um, bluish, you know, just to indicate a little difference. So when the hero is taking damage, the uh, floating text color is red. And when the um, enemy is taking damage, it's blue. So I'm going to click configure. And again, uh, it sets up all of the wiring that you need, the enemy AI, the combat, system, all of that kind of stuff. So when I say, you know, point and click, one one click, it it really is that simple. And then if you want to adjust any of those parameters later, you can just go right over here to 
the inspector and look to see the components that got added to the model. So in this case, it's adding a ridge body, a capsule collider, and then the combat agent itself. Um, one more thing that we need to do here if we want the heads up display to work for the player is add a HUD provider. And so I've also provided that in the prefabs folder here. So if you grab this uh, combat uh, HUD and then drag it over to the HUD provider here inside the um, character, I'll show you what it looks like here real quick. So it's just a very simple health bar right there. There's not a whole lot to it, um, but just placing this uh, canvas inside of the scene and then setting it on the HUD provider will ensure that when you run the scene that the uh, player actually you can see the player's health bar there so um yeah so you can see all those parameters are available if you want to tweak them uh, play around with them and, and adjust as as you'd like now uh, the last thing in this inspector i want to show you real quick is in the bottom animator attack window driver there you can see the weapon has been automatically set to hand underscore r like I mentioned, the tool searches for anything that matches kind of like a right hand description that's part of the uh, rigged skeleton there. So um, it auto picked that and um, in a little bit, I'll actually show you how to set that up as a sword instead of um, the hand. But for now, we can go ahead and actually run this scene and take a look and see how it looks at runtime. So we'll go ahead and hit play and you can see our goblins sitting over there. He doesn't attack right away because he has an aggro radius. And uh, you can see I'm, I'm hitting him. He's hitting me back a little bit. His health bar's going down. Uh, pretty quick battle, but we got him. Um, so I'm going to adjust the scale a little bit. It looks like uh, he's a little bit bigger than me right, right now, which I don't <laughs> think I wanted. So uh, we'll make our, our hero character here a little bit bigger. So let's try this again. Um, yeah, you can see he's not doing as much damage as us. And uh, we're we're hitting him, and he's he's dead. So uh, yeah, that's basically uh, you know a quick and easy way to get this combat system wired up. I tried to make it as customizable as possible. Um, so now what we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna show you. I mentioned before adding a uh, weapon. If you have a model for a sword or an axe or something like that that you want to add to your character, um, I'll show you kind of show you how to do that real quick. So. I've got this sword GLB model that I created in a previous uh, video that I'm going to use again here. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag it into the scene. And then I'm going to move it around and rotate it a little bit to get into my character's hand. Um, kind of want to get it right there around the uh, thumb joint. And then once that uh, looks positioned pretty good, this is important. I need to move it into the skeletal uh, rig here underneath the and uh, bone. So this will ensure that it moves with this part of the skeleton. If I just left it sitting in the scene, it would be kind of floating. And now you can see on the hand, we have this melee weapon component added. And um, right now that's set up as our melee weapon for this character, but we don't want that anymore. We actually want to set this on the sword instead. So I'm going to click on the sword and I'm going to go ahead and add that same component, melee weapon. And then I'm going to want to set the owner to transform to, or sorry, the owner to the hero character combat agent, uh, the owner transform to the hero, and then the attack origin to that, that sword uh, that we just added. So I'll go ahead and drag those ones in there. Um, and then the other thing that we want to make sure we do is go to the hand and remove the melee weapon script uh, from that, since we're not using the hand for our attack. Uh, anymore. And then one more thing actually before we run the scene, there is a reference to the weapon in the combat controller itself. So I'm going to go down here to the animator attack window driver and you can see weapons missing now because we deleted that uh, hand one. So I'm just going to drag the sword into there. And the combat, combat agent wasn't set. I think it finds this automatically, but I'm just going to drag that in there uh, for now while we're in there as well. So. Let's see how she does with a sword. And obviously you could change the damage bonus, uh, you know, per weapon, make it uh, hit for a little bit more damage if you want to, uh, things like that. So um, now she's swiping at this guy with a sword and she got him. So that's gonna do it for this one. 
I had a lot of fun building this tool, and I really hope it helps you in whatever projects you're working on. If you run into any issues or have any ideas for improvement, drop a comment. I'm always happy to help out and iterate on things. Thanks so much for watching. If you made it this far, I hope you'll consider subscribing. I've got a lot more cool videos on the way. See you in the next one. Bye.